Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Anna, and I'm a software engineer at Kabbalah Analytics, an energy analytics startup in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, although we do use computer vision in some of our applications at my company, uh, the project I'm sharing with you today is actually a personal project born out of my desire to uh, learn about the Julia ecosystem and deep learning, uh, both relatively new, well, very new areas uh, of mine. Uh, I come from a, a background in nonprofit work, so building and contributing to social good software and technology has always been uh, really important to me, uh, similar to a lot of the talks that I've seen here. Uh, and uh, I've, as you might have guessed, the goal of my project was to build a model that would predict whale species given a photo of a whale tail. Uh, knowing a whale's species and location can give us critical information about its population, health, and migratory patterns, uh, as well as uh, information about the water it lives in. Uh, and before I delve into my process of developing my convolutional neural network, uh, I want to give some background on the problem space, particularly uh, some basic whale anatomy. Uh, whales have modified limbs known as flukes. Uh, after blowing at the surface of the water, most whales round out and lift their tail flukes before diving into the water, uh, as shown in the photographs behind me. Uh, a whale's flukes are as unique to an individual whale as fingerprints are to humans, although uh, whale, different whale species have similarly shaped flukes with distinguishing characteristics. Uh, for instance, a humpback whale, uh, whale's flukes are serrated and molted black and white on the ventral underside and black on the dorsal side with a small shallow center or median notch, uh, while the blue whale and the sperm whale are both dark uh, and one color. Uh, and as you can see, the blue whale has sort of a curved trailing edge from the fluke tip to the center notch, sort of like a mustache. Uh, so of course, it's easy for us to see and distinguish the color and shape species in these four species of whale, uh, and shape differences rather, excuse me, in these four species of whale. Uh, but could I reasonably accurately train a computer to predict the type of whale given an image of its tail. Uh, first, I, wanted to give a high, I want to give a high-level overview of my process. Um, before I started training my model, uh, I realized I only had one uh, image of a whale, which was not going to work. <laughs> so I needed to uh, acquire some photos uh, of whales or whale tails. Uh, so I actually scraped the, used uh, the Flickr API and, and queried for images of um, uh, the, these different, four different whale species. So uh, if any of you has gone on vacation and posted a photo of a whale, um, you may have inadvertently um, contributed to this. Um, and so I found at least 150 or so images of each whale, uh, with the exception of the humpback that has like over 10,000 images uh, I found. Um, and once I had these images, I did a little bit of spot checking uh, to make sure that they were correctly tagged. Some were mistagged. Um, and then I performed some pre-processing on them using Julia images. I scaled them down. Um, and uh, split them randomly into my test and training sets. Uh, and this circular error just represents that I repeated uh, the image augmentation and model training process several times. Um, that um, cluster of dots is supposed to be my CNN. All right, uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar with neural networks, uh, a neural network is a machine learning technique modeled loosely on the brain that is designed to recognize patterns given training data. Uh, these patterns are numerical, containing vectors into which the data is translated. Uh, CNNs use the same concept, but accept an array of pixel values representing the image uh, as input and contain a convolutional layer as the first layer to the model. Uh, there's many other layers that aren't on this slide. I was running out of room and patience. <laughs> um, um, uh, but the convolutional layer performs a series of operations uh, during which the features, edges, colors, and lines are detected in a feature or activation map. Uh, and after the convolution layers, the 3D array is flattened and passed to the fully connected layers for classification on, in this case, one of my four classes. Uh, a CNN has proved to be a pretty promising approach for images, but it's subject to a number of limitations. Namely, it takes a long time to train, uh, and I need a lot of training data, more than 150 images uh, for each whale. Uh, so I didn't have high hopes for being able to train one from scratch. I did try and train one uh, using Flux um, from scratch and received about a 5% accuracy. So I was really happy. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so to get over this hurdle, I decided to use a pre-trained CNN, which should help alleviate some of my concerns. Uh, this image shows the classification result when using an out-of-the-box pre-trained CNN um, called VGGNet. VGGNet is a pretty popular uh, pre-trained CNN. Um, 
And this and many other well-known um, CNNs, pre-trained models, are, uh, is, are trained on a large image database known as ImageNet. Um, ImageNet is a database of 1.2 million images that is tagged in a hierarchy. Um, while the VGG model would certainly work well when run uh, on a cat or a dog image, um, clearly its vanilla implementation is not necessarily effective for my whale classification. Um, though the surfboards um, classification is certainly incorrect, uh, it did, uh, uh, was able to identify some high level features, the right and left flukes and the dorsal ridge. Uh, so, in order to use a pre-trained model like VGDNet for my specific whale recognition problem, I leveraged an approach called transfer learning. Uh, transfer learning leverages the knowledge and data or, or, and um, architecture obtained on one model and applies it to a different problem statement. Uh, with this approach, I could instantiate the convolutional part of the pre-trained model up to the fully connected layers uh, and train my own small fully connected model um, and uh, put it on top of, my, of the uh, pre-trained um, VGGNet model. Uh, I then loaded the saved data, um, oh, sorry, I then loaded the saved, saved data and trained a small fully connected model on top of my stored features. Uh, using transfer learning on the same VGG16 model that predicted a surfboard, I was able to consistently achieve between 75 and 85 percent accuracy. Uh, these graphs depict the VGC, VGG16 model running three times using 25, 50, and 75 epics. Um, you can see it results in a 72% accuracy, 75% accuracy, and an 80% accuracy. Uh, but the loss on uh, the um, VGG net run with 75 epics uh, is higher. Um, so in my actual implementation, I'll probably use the uh, 50 epics. Uh, these are some other... Um, some other already pre-trained models uh, that I uh, tested, VGG19, uh, which is the second iteration of VGGNet, um, performed slightly better, but uh, it had a longer runtime um, and it's more computationally expensive. Um, <coughs> lastly, here are some uh, actual predictions um, of my whale images. You can see none of them says surfboard. Uh, and next steps for this project, um, I can continue improving the model. Um, I know some great um, other Julia libraries like KNET I've heard and Mocha, um, and I could potentially um, try and implement uh, my model using those. Um, I would like to connect to the Flickr API in real time. Uh, I'm a um, web application engineer um, by training, so I couldn't help but create the very the most simple web app that you've probably ever seen. <laughs> Um, I actually tried to buy whalespotting.com. It cost about $27,000. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and then I, my model doesn't allow for any metadata, um, like where the, where the whale was seen, maybe high up, out, high up of the water it was seen. Um, and this can be critical uh, in determining what whale species um, it, the whale is. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you to the Julia community. Whatever. Well, I have a question. Yeah. Um, did you ever go back and try to improve your flux model based on like what you found when you were looking at the others? Um, I did a little bit. I tried to, I um, tried to, uh, you know, replicate the images and lighten them and create more data, but I didn't achieve an accuracy of over five percent. So okay. It's worth looking into, but. Anyone else? All right, let's thank Anna again. Thank you.